What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Technically Athletic. I am your host, Tyler, and um, I just want to start this episode by first off saying uh, we just want to continue to pray for DeMar Hamlin. Uh, what happened to him during that game really affected me as a former player, and I just really want to send my prayers to him and his family. All right, now let's continue to get into the episode this week. I am interviewing my good friend, Frankie. He, When I got into high school, man, he was really like a big brother to me. And I'm very excited to be able to talk to him about his career. He was just such a hardworking guy. And he continues to play to this day. He's out there doing flag football and still moving, still doing his thing. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoy. Please, if you're listening to this on the audio, make sure you leave us a five-star rating and a review. And if you're tuning in on the YouTube, please hit that notification button, hit that subscribe button, and now enjoy the first part of this interview. Peace. No clearance. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Technically Athletic. I'm your host, Tyler, and I have a special guest with me today. Uh, he is truly a brother to me uh, back in High school, man. I mean, uh, one of the most competitive brothers you will meet, especially on the football field. Okay, you do not tell him you'll beat him in one on one. He will, he will get on you until it happens. Okay, until until you get that chance in one on one, he'll be like, "No, it's not possible." And no, it definitely. still wasn't possible. Uh, one of the hardest working. Brothers, I've I've gotten the chance to play with, you know. what I'm saying we got we got Franklin Williamson. I call we call him Frankie. Frankie, how you doing, bro? <laughs> doing good, man. Doing good. Appreciate you having me on, man. Definitely man. appreciate it. I appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time out to come on. Um, real quick before we get started, mm-hmm. number one, I made sure I worked out before this episode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because, you know, I see you at the gym. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I try to stay, you know, pretty active when I can. Um, I, I, I believe from what I've seen online, I think you, you got something going on. What what can you tell me about uh, BGM? Uh, well, BGM, well, I mean, first, let's start with Big Gorilla Moves. And uh, it actually came about because uh, I'm also a personal trainer. So... Um, I said I'm a personal trainer. So it actually started with my my sister, my sister Nicole Williamson. You know, big gorilla move. It's like a mindset. You know, okay. it's it's about achieving your goals, doing everything to the maximum effort. Um, it doesn't have to be just working out. I mean, it started that way, but you know, it's an aspect of life. I mean, it's a way of life. You know, whatever you do, you want to do it big. You want it to be known. You want to stand out. You want you know be the best version of yourself. And, you know, I, one of my favorite animals is a gorilla. So, you know, it kind of just, that's how I kind of looked at it. And um, it kind of just took on a face of its own. So, um, shoot my phone. My phone <laughs> oh, good. But, um, but nah, like I said, it came, it, it became a, a face of, it, of, it, of its own. And, you know, me and my sister, you know, we actually got the, the trademark for big gorilla moves. And, you know, I started, you know, wearing some of the clothing, you know, while I was training and stuff like that. So my sister kind of thought like, you know, why don't we actually really make it a brand? So that's just my mindset. Okay. Big gorilla moves all the time. I respect yeah. it, man. I respect it. Y'all, you know, forever, li- for who- those who listening, you know, go support. It, it, it looks dope. You know, I'm just saving up to give me a hoodie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I see the prices. <laughs> yeah, nah. definitely, definitely, definitely. Quite definitely. More more merchandise on the way. Right now we got shirts and hats right now. But uh definitely more gear on the way, definitely for the summertime. Um I'm actually flying out to Cali next month. So uh, I'm gonna get a chance to look at some different fabric, things like that. So it's definitely gonna be fine. Word, so, word. Yeah. Right. Well look, man, let's get into the, the the football life, man. Uh first off, man, where you from? Uh, Bowie, Maryland, PG County, uh, born and raised. 
Indeed, indeed. When uh when did you start playing sports in general? Mm, sports in general? I started playing pro- I've been playing sports since I've been probably about five years old, five, six. Uh, yeah. my my family was really big on sports. Uh my father, um, you know, my parents they Jamaican, so you know, he played soccer, he played cricket, you know, he was really big into that. Um, my mom, she ran track. Um, and my, my older brother, you know, he played football, basketball, soccer, track, baseball. My sister, uh, soccer, track, basketball. And See, I was so just... for me, yeah, yeah we, we just, <laughs> just, that's all, all we know in sports. All right. That, that's just, like, I can still remember to this day, um, my parents used to have like this big, big white board, and it had like a schedule. Had my name, my brother's name, my sister's name, and it had a schedule of like practices, games, whatever stuff we had going on. And they just, you know, I give them a lot of credit. They, they really made sure like didn't miss a practice, didn't miss a game. Um, there was some years when I was playing basketball, I was on two teams in the same year, like I mean the same season. I'm sorry. So I have a game at one. And I get to chill for a little bit, and I got a game at six. Like, That's crazy. I make it to both games and stuff like that. So, you know, we're really big into sports. Yo, you, uh, I actually interviewed Kavon for this podcast as well. And, okay. Uh, okay. I had no idea you you were Jamaican, bro. Absolutely yeah. not. But that's fine. Yeah. A, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know, but, yeah, my, my mother's Jamaican, my father's Jamaican. What sport did they emphasize track or it was just like we just gonna make sure you busy? Um honestly, they they emphasized track. I mean, my first sport I played was soccer. Mm, but yeah. I played soccer, then I transitioned into football. I only played soccer for probably about two, three years. Then I started playing football, which my parents actually they were kinda against me playing football. Just because, you know, I used to be so small and um, they didn't want me to play. But track was always like my second love. Like, I actually love running track. Right. And, uh, I mean, I, I excelled at it. But by the time I got to high school, I kind of just wanted to focus on one sport. And that's why I really focused on uh, just football. But I've been playing football since I was nine years old. Yeah, who'd you, who'd you play with in, uh, in the youth league? Football? Yeah, football. I I when I first I first started playing for Silver Spring because my uncle um was actually the head coach. That was my first year playing football, period. So and my cousin was on that team too. So my father kind of figured his yeah. first time you know, played football with his cousins. So you then was that, Yeah, go ahead. You were living in PG, but when you would play in Silver Spring? Yeah, back when I first started playing football, I was living I wasn't living in PG. I was living in uh, Oxen Hill. Jeez, so, that's still that's a yeah, trip, ain't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I went from I, I was living in Oxen Hill, and I was playing for uh, Silver Spring. That was my first year playing football. Shoot. Then after that, I played for South Bowie because that's when I, I okay. moved to South Bowie, and then that's why I was playing football for. But for track, I was running for Hummingbird. Um. That's like a – back then, the teams you wanted to run for was Hummingbird, Glenard. Okay. I mean, those like the top teams, like the top clubs, I should say, at the time that if you want to compete and you want to, you know, get fast, you know, do the Junior Olympics and stuff like that, those are the places you wanted to run for. And then that's where I was at. And, um, and funny enough, when I ran for Hummingbird, all my coaches were – either from Trinidad or Jamaica. <laughs> so, it was funny, like, kind of just talking to them, like, hearing their accent and stuff like that, because I'm, I'm used to it. Yeah. So, um... That's, but, but yeah, what do you, that, um... That was my first all right, so, for football, what positions were you playing when you, back then, when you first started? Oh, I was playing... I was playing D-tackle, and I was, like, playing, like, like, right tackle. Like, I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, back then I never I never liked offense. I only liked defense. 
I know when I first started playing for excuse me, Silver Spring, I was actually DN and fullback. And, I mean, offense was cool, but at the time, I just wanted to hit people. Yeah. So I, that's, all I, that's all I knew. So I said, let me just play off defense. Um, but I knew, I mean, I could always kind of catch the ball, but offense just wasn't my – I wasn't interested in playing offense. So I didn't really start playing receiver until I got to high school. Man, okay. Yeah. Um, for track, what was your, what events were you running? Oh, and what was your favorite event to run? In track, I ran the 800, the 400, the 200, the 4x4, four 4x8, four, four and I did high jump. Um, My favorite, see, it's weird. My favorite event was the 800 because I was the best in it. Like, I was just the most successful doing that. But my least favorite was the 800. Like, I didn't, <laughs> I don't know. I, Bro, it's I, a lot. Yeah, I wanted to really be a sprinter. But just at the time, like, I was a long distance runner. Like, I, I could just, I can pace myself and run at a fast pace for a long period of time. But, you know, at the time, you know, my coaches say, you know, you'll be better in the 800. So I, I did that. I was good at it. I was very successful. But it wasn't my, you know, my go-to. It wasn't my, if I had to pick, I would have been 200, 400, and then the 100. Yeah. But um, it wasn't until later in my years, probably about sixth, seventh grade, I started doing high jump. And that was actually really fun. And I I didn't realize I was going to be as good at that. And I made it to like Junior Olympics for like my first year. But it, it was fun. Oh, that's dope, bro. That's yeah, dope. it was real fun. For for football, man, what is what's the one play or memory you remember most from from youth from youth league, whether it was from you know Silver Spring or South Bowie? What's what's like that, that one play that stands out to you? Uh, man, it's a couple, but I think one that probably and I guess probably actually no, I still go back to my very first very first practice with Silver Spring. My very first practice, my dad's out there. This is my I've never played football before. Like I, I've watched it, I know it, but I never played it. So it's our first day, I got the pads on and everything. And we was doing some hit and drill. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We were on offense. And at that time I was at tight end. And then the quarterback had threw me a pass. And I got hit so hard. Like my father <laughs> till this day my father still talk about it. I got hit so bad. He knew. He knew that, like, I don't want to play football no more. And then when I got in the car after practice, my father said, I'll never forget. He said, he said, so how you how you feel about that hit? And my response was, what hit? And after, <laughs> after I said that, he was like, yeah, he's going to be a football player. He, he, to this day, he still says, he said, that was the scariest hit i probably ever seen you take. was your very first hit. And he was like, you didn't flinch. I mean, to me, that's probably like the classic memory because it was just after since then I just I just knew like I'm a football player. And yeah. then my father, he was kind of upset because he wanted me to play soccer, but I was just like, nah, Dad, I'm, I'm playing football. <laughs> so, yeah. yo, that's what's up. That's fire, man. Um, all right, let's get to uh, let's get to Magnum. Man. Yeah, you, you have, let's get to Magnum. Man. First off. Uh, were you looking at any other schools at that time, or was was McNamara the one you wanted to play for? Um, I kind of always knew I was going to play at McNamara just because. Um, we have a lot of family that went there. Like my my older brother and older sister went there. You know, one of my older cousins went there. So I like I knew, like I knew a lot of the teachers. I knew you know. The coaches, I, I knew a lot of people already. Um, so, like in the eighth grade, I only applied to two schools. It was McNamara, and a lot of people gonna hate me, but I did apply to Demasa. Oh, just for the <laughs> and honestly, just because you know where my middle school was, I went to St. Jerome's for seventh and eighth grade, and that's literally right next to Demasa. Gotcha. So my mother always said, you know. We know we know that you're gonna go to 
McNamara, but you still need to have a backup school just in case. So I actually went on a shadow visit to um, Damatha, and for a lack of better words, I hated it. Like, I, I didn't like anything about it. Like, I, I just knew it wasn't for me. But I didn't trip about it too much because I'm like, I know I'm not going to go here. Right. But it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I actually got accepted into uh, into Damatha and everything. But I knew I was never going to go there. But, yeah, I always knew I was going to go to McNamara. Like, always. That's a, I feel like, especially as an athlete, if you know you go in there and intentionally, like, I want to play football for this school, especially for the math, it's almost like, even back then you knew, like, if you ain't getting those, if, I, well, did you get a scholarship? Was you was you given any any type of scholarship to, to play at the math? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But they, I mean, I knew the coach, uh, Bill McGregor, I knew the coach okay. and everything. I've been to, you know, their camps and stuff. So he wanted me to play there, but, you know, with them, it, with them, with recruiting, yeah. they recruit so many players. It's it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous, like you said. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but, you yeah, know, man. I was definitely, I was definitely highly not highly sought out, but you know, I talked to the coach. He wanted me to go there, but I knew deep down that there was no way I was gonna go to. There was no way I was gonna go there. Yeah. So, um, freshman, your freshman year, Magnumay. Did y'all did y'all have a freshman team in that time? Or it was it was JV, right? He mm-hmm. was on JV. I mean, when I was there, we, we didn't have a freshman team. It was JV and varsity. Okay, all right. How was that first year? Um, did you go to the varsity training camp? Um. Her- well, when I was there, it, it was it was camp for everybody. It was never a a varsity camp jv camp it was when you first get there it's just camp for everybody period yeah. so, so my phone my phone about to my phone's about to, to put on the charger <laughs> it's all good we'll make it work <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that's got time rotate a little bit there we go but yeah oh um, god dang <laughs> oh give me one second bro i got it. yeah no nah, it's cool it's cool we're gonna, we're gonna get it right there it is all right but um, nah, it wasn't a, it wasn't like a, a like a varsity camp. I mean, how it happened? Just everybody reported to camp, and throughout the beginning of beginning of camp, everyone's like together. So, I'm 14 years old going against like 17, 18 year olds, you know, and that was going into freshman camp. I was going in thinking I'm playing DN. And I'm like 110 pounds. <laughs> so after the first practice, you know, coach is like, maybe you should try another position. So I said, all right, well, I guess I'll try working at receiver. So, which really the transition wasn't really hard for me. Yeah. Um, I could I could always catch the ball pretty well, and I, I never shied away from contact. So that wasn't that wasn't difficult. Uh, my freshman, our JV team was really good. I, I won't lie. That's you know that's what I hear. That's that. That's what I heard, man. Um, y'all, who was on that team? Um, Brandon Coleman. <sighs> uh, he was on that team. Uh, Matthew Goldsmith was on that team. James Joseph was on that team. A lot of team. That was pretty much the same team that we had when yeah, fast forward to my right? junior year when we went eight and two. Yeah, you know, that was that was pretty much. The same team. Um, what do I? So you, so you play receiver. Okay, the the transition, the transition, because, like you said, you was pretty much playing the line mm-hmm. all your life until you get to get to uh, high school. So that first mm-hmm. game out there, receiver. What was that like for you? Um. To be honest, to be honest, it, it, it was it was fast. The game was real fast. Um, by the I, honestly, it, it slowed down for me after I had like that one hit. I never forget. We was playing St. John's, and 
James had threw me a post like towards the middle of the field. And I caught it. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I got hit pretty bad, but like my adrenaline was like, all right, I'm good. Like I'm here now. I mean, ever since then, I mean, I, I felt fine. Um, but it was definitely fast. Like the game was like fast. I had to really learn learn the game of playing receiver. Cause like I said, that my freshman year, that was my first time playing like receiver, period. Yeah. So strictly receiver. Like when I was in, you know, middle school and stuff, I was mainly defense. Every once in a while they'll put me a tight end, I'll catch a quick pass, but for the most part, I was a defensive player. But um nah, I mean it wasn't it wasn't that bad of a transition for me, I guess. At that time, how much – how tall were you at that time? I was I was short. I was like 5'9". I was like 5'9", five, 5'8", five, when I was a Yeah, freshman. weighing what? Like you, like you said, 110, something yeah, like I was that? Yeah, like, I was 110 my freshman year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I say all this because, you know, for, for anybody who listens, for like the younger boys, like – Bro, you going to be a hundred some pound. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't yeah. feel like you're too small, too, bro. You just, everybody the same age here, especially JV. Like, go out there and play. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, nah. Um, so, tell me about that off season, Because, um, you know, for me, uh, s- there was some rough off seasons back in McNamee. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, mm-hmm. they tell me about the first, your, your first off season at McNamee. Um... Um, uh, that was that off season. It was, it wasn't rough, but it was. That's when I really was working on my craft to actually really learn to be a better receiver. I know back then, you know, I was working with uh, Matthew Goldsmith. I was working with Brandon Coleman, um, uh, Jerome Copeland. Um. Yeah, I mean, t- to me, yeah. I was really like a sponge to like to football. Like I was trying to learn it from every single person. You know, Cam Chisholm, uh, of course, Rashad Rich. Um, that's crazy to think you was you know learning under future yeah. NFL players. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like I really uh. like when they're doing field work. I'm running out there, throwing my cleats on, and just jumping in. Right. Um, doing one on ones. Even I may not even catch a pass, but like I'm still like just working, constantly working, getting better, getting better. So um, that off season, it, it was kind of frustrating because, you know, I'm going against older guys, so I'm not. I'm struggling more, but mm. I take a lot of credit to the struggles that I was having then made all the difference going into the next season. Facts. So. Facts. So the next season, I pull up. It's like mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? You, yeah, you, yeah, you know yeah. you um uh, our journey, my journey of J V was uh was different from y'all because we never had to do the varsity training camp. But right. we, you know, we would show up and then y'all come in later. You know what I'm saying? Y'all would y'all mm-hmm. would do, I guess, a couple weeks. Um, so by then y'all already pretty much full go. Yeah. Um it was a rough season. <laughs> it was right. a rough season. Right. Uh, what do you remember most from sophomore year? Um sophomore year. Um uh, it definitely had its ups and downs. But for me, it kind of taught me to be to learn how to be like a better leader. Mm, yeah, yeah, you definitely uh, would. That to me, that, that that's the biggest takeaway I got from my sophomore year. And then also that year, I was kind of bouncing back and forth because I would suit up for varsity. Then I still come back and play JV. So it was to me, it was good because I can kind of take what I was learning. Like I said, from the older guys, and I could bring it, you know, like to your class, you know, just from a leadership aspect. And it wasn't just on the field; it was like off the field too. So 
um, like in the classroom, in the weight room, things like that. Um, but like on the field, like it was definitely, I wouldn't say it was a struggle for me personally. It was just, it was a learning experience. That, that, yeah. That's the best way I can kind of look at it. Like my sophomore year. It was, we was, we was young, man. Yeah. Like offensive line. It's crazy how much the trenches really affect mm -hmm. the whole, the team as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, we um, had the skill players. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I think, and you know, even McNamara now, I feel like that's that's the thing, man. Trying to same get, thing. Trying to get the big dogs is get the tough. Big dogs. They're, they're always gonna have the skill players. That that's never been a question for McNamara. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, okay. I just well, first of all, I just got some stories. I want to thank you for teaching me how to weave in the back pedal. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I never forget. Yeah. I never forget. I was I was waiting on my parents. And I was just like, bro, I can't get this weed. He's like, bro, it's easy, bro. You just got, you just push off your leg. You just push off your leg. That's it. Hey, and then, you know, I, bro, I got that thing down. But um, that off season, I realized like the competitiveness you had, or just the drive. I'm yeah. just curious, like, what was your motivation? What was your motivation during that time? Um, my motivation it. I don't. I mean, my my motivation. I just didn't see my bad. I, I ain't see like too you, many people going as hard as you. So I don't know if you noticed it, but there's a lot of complaining as niggas. I might have been one of them, but I knew for a fact. <laughs> like Frankie, you you be like this hill. Oh, this hill ain't nothing. <laughs> we hitting it. You know what I'm saying? Like them. It was just a lot. Of, I'd be like, bro, this boy don't stop. I don't get it. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I can kind of credit that to just how I was raised. Like, I was just never content. Like, I mm. always just wanted to get better. So, to me, to me, like, when people say, man, you was really competitive, I, I'd be like, yeah, but it never really registered to me. That, that's just how I was. You know, I always wanted, I always wanted to do better than the next person. Because growing up, I was always... Well, especially from, well, I took that back. From my freshman year, I was always seen as, you know, kind of small as shit, you know, not really going to take that next step. So I kind of always use that as motivation. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's just how I look at it. I mean, I, I kind of give that credit a lot to my father because, um, I mean, my mother too, but definitely my father because he was really, you know, he was leading, leading the charge, you know, with the sports and everything, always pushing, always competing. Um, and I, I give all the credit to him for that. And especially my brother too. Um, just always just trying to be better, always be better than how I was yesterday or how I was last season. So I'm always improving. So that, that's just yeah. kind of where my competitiveness like came from. Word, man. Word. Um, you go into junior year. This mm -hmm. is probably one of the one of the best teams in in McNamara history. All right. So, what was that like playing on that eight and two team? It just uh, y'all just really made it look easy. <laughs> I mean, at least from the J from from the from the from the little ones. What was that season like for y'all for you? Um. For me, well, for us that year, it's crazy because that was like the same team we had when I was a freshman. So yeah. we just had like a lot of talent and we just, we were, we all believed in one another. Whether you was a starter, we use a second string to a third string because I guess the older guys, they made sure whoever the backup was, Motherfucker, you gonna be ready to play when the time come. Like, like for me, you know, I was behind Matthew Goldsmith. I was behind Brandon Coleman. You know, um, my boy Devin. Like, it, it, it was several receivers that was ahead of me. You know, so when I got in, 
I made sure I was ready. And I think we all just gelled together. We, we just we just gelled together. And I just think from athlete-wise, I think we probably had, if not the best, one of the best all-around teams at McNamara. I mean, till this day, people still talk about that 2010 year. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Shout out to James Joseph. Uh, yeah, he was, a, he was a beast of a quarterback. Man. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, that that was my sure. guy. That was my guy, James. I mean, you know, cool as a cucumber. Yeah, he, he was not. He was, <laughs> I mean, he was never rattled. I mean, he was just a winner. You know, he he was a hell of a hell of a passer. And then when he take off, he's not running out of bounds. He's running downhill to run you over. You know what I mean? Facts, man. Um, well. One of the games I ain't go to too many of the varsity games, but one of them I went to was the the Magnumet Dematha game that year was mm-hmm. one of the like biggest games I've seen at Magnumet in, mm-hmm. in a long time. Like yep. I don't think I ever seen another game that big in that stadium. Um, man, what was that like for y'all playing in that atmosphere? Like I know I know it was a, y'all we didn't come out victorious, but leading up to that game. Uh, in the atmosphere, like what was that like playing in that? Honestly, just another game. Really, like the, the the way we approached every game. Like, of course, you know we excited, we hyped things like that, but we never was like, you know, I mean, of course, you know, you know, that's our rival. That's the goal is to beat the matter, but at the same time, we didn't look at them in any type of light. It was just like. Who's next? Mm. You know, mm. that 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 was kind of like our mindset, like, who's next? As long as we play together, we got a good chance of winning. Unfortunately, we weren't victorious, but at the same time, we was never really, you know, we weren't, we, we didn't care about who that team, what the other team name was. We didn't care if it was the Matha, Good Counsel, St. John's. Mm. Like, our mindset, we putting 30 on your head. Yeah, that that was just our mindset. That was a uh, that was a tough game, bro. I mean, both teams just hitting. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a, that was a that physical one, game. It, it was that was a real physical game. Real physical, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so, senior year. Well, shout out, shout out to all of those to them uh, seniors, man. Coleman, Tao. Oh yeah, James, yeah. man. This was a solid class. Mm-hmm. Um, Senior year, I look. I don't like to talk about senior. <laughs> talking yeah, about that year too much. Like, right. but um, based, I look 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 at your uh, your college bio. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Of course you, of course you started that year, but you you doubled the amount of catches you had from junior to senior. Year. And I mean, of course that is due to the the seniors or the class of four. But this there was clearly a uh, you clearly put in a lot of work that all season. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, what would you say was the difference for you, for you specifically as a receiver going into that senior year? Um, just more, to, I mean, once again, just going back to stepping into a leadership role. Um, I guess the reason why I was a little bit more successful in my senior year because I just felt like I was ready. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, shout out to Coach Bevel. You know, he... He gave me a task that, you know, we understood that we was going to have a young quarterback. And, you know, our offensive line was going to be young. So, you know, he gave me the task that you got to be ready to make sure you know what everyone's doing at all times. So when stuff breaks down and a quarterback just needs to find someone to throw to, I got to be there. Um, And then, like I said, I can't take all credit. You know, um, my boy Nico. He was another receiver that was there with us. Um, and honestly, you know, if I'm going to be completely honest, I was I was kind of cocky going into my senior year. Uh, at the beginning of the season, I was kind of I was kind of cocky. You know, felt like I had kind of arrived already. And of course, you know, we, we were struggling until one day uh, Coach Bell, he sat me down in his office and just told me, you know, you, you need to you need to hit a reset button, and once mm. he told me that, 
that's when I was like, all right, you know, lock back in. I'm the first one at practice, the last one to leave. Um, always in the film room, getting the extra film in the weight room, constantly working on things I need to work on, things like that. Uh, really helping out, you know, the young guys on the team, um, helping out the quarterback, letting them know um, the plays, letting them know, you know, what the reads are, things like that. But definitely it it was kind of like a uh, like an eye-opening experience for me. You know, it was definitely frustrating, like, you know, from a, of course, you know, we didn't, the season didn't go how we planned it to go. But at the same time, for me, I, I just, it was an experience. Experience I, you know, <laughs> I wish I never had, but, you know. <laughs> it was an experience. It was an experience. You know what, I, I forget to, uh, I got to, I got to ask. Uh, so when I say these words, I just want to know what you think, okay? Okay. West West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. <laughs> we had two a days. We had three a days. Like till this day, like college, arena, all that. That is still the worst camp I ever had to go through in my life. Like that, that, that camp made me question if I wanted to play football in college. It was that bad for me. Like, I, it was just, like, two-a-days, three-a-days, meetings, film. I was like, I, I can't take this. I definitely, when I was in college, I was like, man, this ain't nothing. They, to exactly. Like, that, like, that's how I felt by the time I got to college after that camp. Man, uh, you was also the punter. Was you punter your junior year, too? Yeah, I, I was – I wasn't the starting punter. I backed up Coleman. I back I backed up uh, Coleman. Brandon Coleman on that. And by the time you know my senior year, I was starting at receiver and punter. And um, I yeah, go ahead. I gotta ask you from the perspective of the punter. You know, me and Kavad talked about this. Um, that first game, we couldn't get a punt off Mount St. Joe's. I'm just curious <laughs> from your perspective, because I know it ain't had nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. But I'm just asking, what was going through your mind? <laughs> I wish one of y'all motherfuckers would block. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was. I mean, <laughs> it, it, that shit was after crazy. that game, I, I I remember it was after that game. I actually asked Coach Bell. I said, "Can we get another punter?" And he was like, oh, no. <laughs> because Man. I remember that game. It was one bad snap. And I tried to pick it up. And I couldn't pick it up at the time. And it just went throughout the back of the end zone. And it was like two other punts that just got blocked. Like, and I, it was to a point I was legit getting worried. Because I'm like, well, they're going to break my leg one of these times. I'm trying to kick the ball. <laughs>